Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Tonight's video is going to be a bit different from our standard Proxmox content. In tonight's video, I'm going to go ahead and work with one of the different programs that we have for creating containers outside of Proxmox. This program is called LXD. It is the same virtualization program that Proxmox uses for its container. But we're going to go ahead and use it in the command line interface instead of using it through Proxmox's nice web interface. We are not even on Proxmox today. Well, kind of. This is a VM that's running Ubuntu that is hosted on my virtualization server. But that is just to make it easy and cheap for us to demonstrate today as well as allow me to easily record my screen. So, the first thing we want to do is to run a sudo apt update and make sure our repositories are all up to date. Now, we can install LXD. The command to do this is apt install LXD. Now, I like to run this command to verify that LXD is installed and working. But you do not have to do this. This is personal preference. LXC list. It will take a few minutes to run the first time. All right, now it's time to begin configuring LXD to be able to be used to virtualize more containers. The command to do this is LXD init. And now it's going to ask us a bunch of questions to help us set up LXD so that we can begin using it. We're going to use mostly defaults through this process as I want to keep this simple, but we will be choosing LVM instead of ZFS as a storage system as I'm just more familiar with working with it and more comfortable. So for the first question, would I like to use cluster? No, but that is something to note for later on. You can cluster multiple systems running LXD together to make one quote unquote supercomputer or high availability cluster for your containers in a better definition. Would we like to configure a new storage pool? Yes, and we can name this storage pool. Let's call it VE today. Now, here is the part where the default configuration is ZFS, but I am going to choose LVM. Feel free to use whatever you're more comfortable with. Now, I want to set up a new LVM pool. Yes. No. Now, there is a little thing here that happens that I have noticed. If you enter 5 GB like this, it will kick back and tell you it's an invalid syntax. After entering the size, in this case 5, you need to enter a capital GB for gigabytes. No. Would you like to create a new local network bridge? Yes. And we're going to use the default naming convention of LXD BR0. What IPv4 address should be used? We're going to use auto here. What IPv6 address should be used? And I'm going to again use auto. Would you like the LXD server to be available over the network? The default setup is no. No. Now, here you go. You now have LXD set up and ready to use for your first container. Let's go ahead and start looking for an image. Now, if we enter just LXC image, 
list images like this. We're going to get a lot of images and not be able to see anything really at all. But lucky for us, we can sort a little bit more to look for some other images. In this case, let's look for some Ubuntu images. So using the command we just used, let's place a pipe delimiter, then enter G R E P dash I and the name of the image that we're searching for. Ubuntu in our case. Now here you go. Here is a list of some of the Ubuntu images available to us. To download and begin using one of these Ubuntu images, we're going to use the command LXC launch images. Then we're going to enter Ubuntu and the version followed by the kind. In this case, we're going to use AMD 64. Finally, we're going to enter the container name. In this case, let's just call it test. Now it'll download the image from the internet and set up our container. There you have it. There is your first container up and running. Now, if we enter LXC list this time, you can see that container test is now up and running with its own IPv4 and IPv6 address. Now you want to note that they are different from that of my network. And that is because inside of LXD, it hosts its own DNS server and distributes all of its own IP addresses for all of its containers. There is a configuration process for disabling this, and we'll be showing you that in an upcoming video as we begin working more with LXC containers. So let's leave off this video with one last thing of how to log into this container and begin interacting with it. To do that, we're going to run LXC exec the name test and sh for the type of communication we want to do with this container. This is going to interact exactly the same as we would with a standard Linux terminal. Here we are. So one of the first commands we can do and if you remember earlier that this system is indeed fully updated and it said there were no updates available. Now watch what happens when I run it this time. It says there are two. Just take note of that. I thought it was a decent way to show you that we are indeed inside of a container that is different from our operating system and working independently. For the most part, as you know if you've researched containers, there are elements of the host operating system that are passed through. These are different depending on the privilege level of the container, but there are nonetheless elements that are passed through. So the final command I want to show you is just the upgrade, just to show you again that we can easily interact with our container. Now, to exit out of our container and go back to our VM's command line, we can just type exit. There you have it. We have set up our first container using LXD. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video found it informative, and gained some information to begin working with LXD and LXC containers on your Linux system. As always, have a good night.